sharks. These big sharks have not only been called goblins, but also vampires. Hello, my name is Jeff, and thanks again for hanging out with us here on Laugh Pack's Animal Files. Today we are going over some incredible facts about the goblin shark. Now this shark is not just called goblin shark because it has a nice ring to it. These things look nasty. Ew. 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 And they can get pretty big. The goblin shark can be anywhere from 10 to 13 feet long, weighing around 350 pounds. That being said, a female was caught in 2000 that was over 18 feet long. That's the length of a double garage door. Would not want to come across one of those in the water. I'm okay. And where do goblin sharks live? Well, when you're that big and that mean looking, you kind of live wherever you want to. But the goblin has been found in the deep seas of the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and they are most commonly found off the coast of Japan. It is very rare to see one in the wild. Deep sea fishermen will only see two or three a year. However, during April of 2003, more than a hundred goblin sharks were caught off northwestern Taiwan. Because the event was unknown, some speculate it was due to a major deep sea earthquake. But others assumed it was because these sharks forgot to hit the subscribe button to this channel. So smash that subscribe button. I mean, you don't want to end up in someone's fishing net, do you? Didn't think so. Okay, now that we've got that covered, let's take a dive deep into goblin territory. The goblin shark may not have gotten their name the way you think. Japanese fishermen who accidentally caught one of the first recorded goblin sharks couldn't help but notice their protruding snouts which reminded them of folk stories about a long-nosed, red-faced demon known as the Tengu. So they began calling the species Tengu Zam. Zam means shark in Japanese. This was eventually translated into English as goblin shark, with elfin shark being an alternative name the creature occasionally goes by. Now, the goblin shark is also sometimes called the vampire shark. Yeah, as if it wasn't scary enough already. The reason it is called a vampire is because it avoids the light by living deep in the sea. Goblin sharks have been found at depths from 890 feet to as deep as 4,300 feet. As the legends tell, the vampires avoid the sunlight by sleeping in coffins. But the shark just goes to water so deep that there is virtually no light whatsoever. So yeah, Vampire Shark is a fitting name. The Goblin Shark's most distinctive feature is arguably its long, flattened snout, which looks like the blade of a broad sword when viewed from above. Some have proposed that this extra long snout is used to dig around through the bottom of the sea floor. Another explanation is the ampullae of Lorenzini the sensory system that allows sharks to pick up the electrical signals of prey underwater. They're like little pores on their snouts that are connected to nerves that allow them to, quote, see electrical signals. Like the same electrical signals that all living things give off. Scientists believe that one reason why hammerhead sharks have such odd-looking heads is because the broad, flat noggin design provides extra room for more of these ampullae of Lorenzini pores. Maybe the goblin shark's elongated snout was designed for the same purpose. A goblin shark's jaw is very unique. They are attached to elastic ligaments. And when prey comes within striking distance, that jaw protrudes, allowing the shark to catapult its whole mouth forward at a distance equal to 8.6 and 9.4% of its total body length which, if you were to do the math, is about a foot in length. Now, if a human mouth was capable of moving like that, you could bite into a piece of food dangling seven inches in front of your nose. This unique bite style has been dubbed slingshot feeding. These sharks can deploy their jaws at a speed of over 10 feet per second. Wow, that is fast! Once they spear their prey with those sharp teeth, 
they bring it back in to their mouth. Now, many fish specialists out there used to assume, like many other sharks, goblins were gray. But in 1976, scientists photographed a specimen on the verge of death. And of all the colors, the fish was pink. Goblin sharks have translucent skin that lacks pigment. And thanks to bloodstreams lying just beneath the hide, the goblin shark appears pinkish or even outright red if it is older. This is a definite advantage in deep water because red looks black in the depths of the sea. And this helps the shark blend in with its surroundings. I can't see it. Since the goblin shark creeps up on its prey, the camouflage color helps it hide in plain sight. I'm just gonna say it how it is. Goblin sharks are flabby, soft-bodied predators with small fins and a flexible tail that isn't designed for rapid bursts of propulsion, making them very slow-moving fish. With a top speed of about 15 miles per hour, there are many underwater sea creatures that can outswim them. And maybe this is why the slingshot feeding technique was built into these creatures, as a way to help the sluggish carnivore catch its prey in low light conditions. I mean, they must not be too slow, seeing how their diet usually consists of crabs and squid. Hey, you back up, you back up. No, I do not want to go visit the goblin shark. No, you know what we're gonna do? You know what we're gonna do? Me and my friend Nipey, we're getting out of here. Goblin sharks are not only intense looking, but they are also just intense. Now, if the knowledge of this fish makes you a little fearful of ever going into the water again, not to worry. Not only do the goblins like deeper seas that you probably won't be finding yourself in, but there is not one case of human attacks on record. So you, my friend, are a-okay. But does knowing any of that help? Would you actually jump into an aquarium filled with a couple of these goblins if you were dared to? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click that like button. Hit the bell so you don't miss out when we shine the spotlight on a future incredible animal. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all next time.